brutal, naturalistic, and confidently incredible. Hey everyone, let's take a look at the Northmen. Once in a while, in a very long while, a movie comes along that encapsulates so incredibly well what fantastic experience movies can be that I would wholeheartedly recommend it to everyone. The only thing that should keep you from watching this movie is an aversion to violence and cruelty. Fate has no mercy. What makes The Northman so astoundingly good is the fact that Robert Eggers manages to distill the essence of storytelling and brings that onto the screen with such confidence and craftsmanship that I honestly consider this to be the purest form of movie making that I have seen in close to a decade. It has the natural elements of Kurosawa's movies, but with a tragic heaviness of Norse mythology brought to life in a fantastical yet grounded fashion. The Northman is, unlike anything else out there right now, possibly anything else you've ever seen. So let's start with the fundamentals. The story. I will avenge you, father! I will save you, mother! I will kill you, Fiona! I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. I will kill you, Fiona. The Northman is a literal epic that follows Amleth, a young Viking prince, on his quest to avenge his father's murder. It's a Shakespearean story, if you like, because... It's actually the tale that inspired Hamlet, and consequently dozens of other movies such as The Lion King. The story is a straightforward and mythical tale that allows Agris to focus on the narrative, the characters, and the world-building elements, because unlike many modern-day stories, this one doesn't have a hero or a villain. How oh, I've missed you, my son. One day this kingdom will be yours. Thank you, father. My king. It's a world where morality and right or wrong are contextually based on every character's point of view, beliefs, and perception of the world. All of it is justifiable. All of it is comprehensible. You must choose between kindness for your kin or hate for your enemies. And it does all of that while subconsciously contemplating the nature of the human condition. Does one man's pain justify another one's? Does our conditioning as children define our future? How much of that is predetermined? And can we break free of that fate? How much of our perception of the world are just stories we tell ourselves to make it the fantasy we want it to be, to justify the actions we take, no matter how cruel or ill-conceived they might be? And the entirety of the cast carries these sentiments perfectly. After watching the trailer, you would be forgiving for believing that Alexander Skarsgård is playing but a brute, whereas in all actuality, he manages to poetically portray a broken man who desperately tries to find some closure for his past, while interpreting everything that happens around him as a sign of fate and godly guidance, only to be emotionally devastated when he realizes that his reality is one that he might have conjured up himself. And this transformation from a cold and all-destroying brute to an emotionally conflicted and torn character is performed exquisitely. I have the cunning to break their minds. And Anya Taylor Joy manages to be the perfect antithesis of Skarsgård, where he's heavy and focused on the past, she's gentle and focused on the future. Her calm but intense demeanor and often seamless movement, particularly that of her eyes, give her an unreal and magical presence. Considering that she's playing the white witch from the birch forest, this makes her absolutely perfect for this role. She manages to balance her portrayal of Olga on the very thin line between being able to take care of herself while also being aware that this harsh world can hardly be survived on one's own. She has a very dubious presence throughout, which also bears a striking resemblance to Queen Gudrun in more than just looks. I wonder if that's on purpose. I can feel that. Clay Banks Fjolner is my favorite character, however. He's like a ship on the harsh open sea. He's carrying all the anger and past of all the others inside him, while being pushed around by the tides and winds of fate, unable to escape any of it. His performance is so incredibly nuanced that he manages to never be steered into anything that could be categorized as good or bad. He just is, in the purest form any character can ever be. I will save you, mother. And Nicole Kidman, initially portrayed as a defenseless queen, quickly develops into a multifaceted and manipulative force to be reckoned with, moving unknowingly from the shadows. Even with her limited screen time, she manages to 
energetically deliver her scenes with bravado, and even though she's usually in the background, you can always feel her presence and the guiding hand she may have had on the situation unfolding. That said, visually she does stand out from the rest of the cast, which sometimes becomes distracting. Ethan Hawke, as short as he's in this, is perfect. He delivers an authority that is deserving of a king, yet creates an uneasy presence that is hard to shake off, which makes the journey his son goes on all the more intriguing to watch as you see Amleth grow into a king himself. And Willem Dafoe is in this, because it's a Robert Eggers movie. Of course it is, and I love it. Your fate is set and you cannot escape it. And jumping to Robert Eggers, rarely have I seen a movie so pure, so aware of itself and aware of the madness in its humanity. It's such a delicately crafted experience that, and I say this very rarely, I consider the Northmen to be art. The seamlessness of how all the individual elements come together in this visceral haunting whole of a movie he has conjured up is, for me, easily the closest I have ever dreamt of coming to a Norse epic. Why would he stow away to such a hellish place? To find what was stolen from me. And what is that? The kingdom. The cinematography highlights the historically and period authentic art and costume design, while walking a fine line between being naturalistic and practical while also creating moments of poetry and magic all of which are used to create this singular and very particular perception of this world. And the throaty and muscular score make you feel like you're on this warpath yourself. But the one thing that really stood out to me was that they partially used sound design to bring life to inanimate objects, to give them an acoustic aura as if they are speaking to Amleth, very much as an enchanted object would. His sword in particular has this vibrating sound to it which acoustically implies what Amleth perceives as a supernatural force giving him even more confidence and delusions of invulnerability and greatness, very much like the One Ring did in The Lord of the Rings. And the movie is littered throughout with world-building elements like those that pass the Viking mindset without judgment and without romanticizing it. In conclusion, I think Robert Eggers himself put it perfectly when he said, every part of life is an expression of belief. And The Northman encapsulates that perfectly. It is such a uniquely rare breed of a movie, so incredibly well made and a story so incredibly well told, that I honestly believe this is an experience that everyone who has even the slightest interest in movies should watch. And I sincerely doubt that we will see anything like this anytime soon again. The Northman is a masterpiece. I cannot escape my fate. And if you enjoyed this short insight, you may like this one as well, as this is it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.